the spectrum with more questions than answers. John Grant, an original wing of the mid-70s, served as the early link. And the Philadelphia fans provided a healthy dose of motivation. After one year, it was clear there was a future for indoor lacrosse in Philadelphia. Slowly, the major indoor lacrosse league has grown and in many ways has flourished. Expansion has added two teams, well received in the league opener. And now the fastest game on two feet opens a new season at the Spectrum. One-time league MVP John Tucker and veteran netminder Kevin Bilger among the headliners as the Wings are back. They are bigger, they are stronger, they are deeper. The Philadelphia Wings return to the Spectrum to play the expansion. New England Blazers, welcome everybody to Major Indoor Lacrosse. I'm Larry Rosen, joined by the coach, Tony Seaman from the University of Pennsylvania. Tony, it's year three for the Wings. Many of these players have been along for the ride all the way through. Do you sense a growing among these players? Sure, experience is a, is a great thing, and uh, I think that we're going to find the Wings to be more mature. They, they're used to the arena, they're used to the crowd, and I think they're going to be very successful this year. Conversely, a couple of new teams, including tonight's opponent, the New England Blazers, not a lot of box experience on the floor for those guys. No, young, uh, just out of college, most of them, only one player has box experience, but very, very quick. A new young coach is excited, he's an innovator, we're going to see good things out of him. Uh, the whole system and the whole team, I think, is, uh, is up and they're ready to play. Now, the Wings had the fewest goals among any of the teams in the league last year, 90 in eight games, but they've tried to make some changes, adopt a bit of a new philosophy. Yeah, they hope to push the ball a little bit faster, and, and the leader in that is going to be John Tucker, certainly my favorite for the last two years. And He's an outstanding midfielder. He does it all, and uh, we expect big things out of John this year. And Tuck, the league MVP back in 1986, a bit of an off year a year ago. Some new faces, of course, for the Philadelphia Wings, some famous names in the indoor and outdoor world of the including a Wharton guy you know very well. Yes, my assistant coach, Brad Kotz, who's in his second year at the Wharton School. Brad Kotz is probably the best lacrosse player in the game today. Four-time All-American. He was the most valuable player this week, but when it started in his initial year, he laid off last year. He brings some experience and a great shooting to this team. Ready to go? Ready to go. We've got some fired-up athletes down on the floor. We'll come back with starting lineups in a moment. Stay with us. Major Indoor Lacrosse on Prism is brought to you by... Coors Light, the official beer of Major Indoor Lacrosse, it's the right beer now. By U.S. Air, by the USA on U.S. Air. By the Philadelphia Airport Hilton Hotel, headquarters of the Philadelphia Wings. By STX, when you think lacrosse, think STX. And by Gold Medal Sporting Goods, with 10 convenient locations, it's the official sporting goods store of the Wings. Another wonderful crowd to open season number three. An interesting, kind of unique electricity in the air, waiting to see just what will transpire in year three. We're about ready to go. Here's a quick look at the starting lineups for the two teams. For Philadelphia, a couple of veteran co-captains in DeSico and Tucker, joined by a couple of rookies in Gabrielton and Freed. And we will pick up the New England squad as we go. Of course, everybody in New England is new to us, except John Fay, the veteran, who's played in the league before. Our officials tonight, led by a veteran, Scott Boyle, and he's not wearing a helmet. So there's his two cohorts also. Uh, they are decked out in the protective headgear. And there is uh, Scott Gabrielson, a, a rookie out of uh, Princeton, New Jersey, and a face-off expert. There's a look at the scratches. Tom Haddam, John McGinney, Jeff Bozo, Probably the most familiar names, Mark Michella, a backup goalkeeper, had the scratches for the New England Blazers. And we're ready to go for season number three. Larry Rosen with Tony Seaman. Scott Gabrielson, the ninth pick in the draft this year, has it underway. Possession Philadelphia. And Tony, the first few minutes of these games usually somewhat fun, huh? Yeah, definitely fun. And uh, both goalies want to get hit with a the ball. They want a chance to make the save, get their concentration level up. Get into the game. Everybody wants to touch the ball now. Get it around. And they look quickly down low for Freed, does John Tucker. And it's recovered by New England. Smith's on the outlet. New England should be a, a relatively quick team as Smith carries down, drops to Desco. Desco behind is Smith and is drilled. That is Carr at the top, Kelly Carr. Again, this is a, an outdoor team. 
they've been practicing. Club. They've been practicing in a very, very small arena, so this is very, very big for them. I think they're going to have to get their lanes settled. They're going to have to get their spacing, uh, that kind of thing. There, we saw a pass get thrown over someone's head out of bounds. So that kind of thing, as you just so wisely said, Larry, inexperienced. They got to catch up on that. They got to get the feel of the game. That's Ricky Free, the one-on-one -on -one move and the deep rebound. Remember, with the active lacrosse ball, deep rebound. And again, the goalkeepers come into play on the offensive end, and uh, a good one in John Yeager for New England. That's Bill Bergen. Good cross pass, and the first save by Kevin Bilger. At the top is Chinachuk. Bruce Chinachuk, it's great John Hopkins ball player for four years. That's a lovely setup for Todd Francis as Gabrielson gets into the action for the first time. And some more veterans come back out for Philadelphia. We play two minutes of scoreless lacrosse. Welcome to year three, Major Indoor Lacrosse League. With the ball now, Andy Wilson, center of your screen, coming into the top. Number 55, the very first pick of the draft, a Canadian-born player, an All-American from Loyola, playing catch at the top with Brad Cox. Tell you a lot more about Brad Cox. Thrilled to have Brad on board. There he is, number 30. A lot of offense triggered from behind the midsection save by Jaeger. Off the stick of Gary Martin. It's good to see Brad Cox in a winged uniform. One of the few recognizable names, really, in the world of lacrosse. And you know Brad, is he happy to be back? Oh yeah, he's thrilled. You know, this is a very big year. Everybody's really concentrating on the box and, and really glad to participate because this is the year of the uh, World Games in 1990 down in Australia. So this gives everybody a chance to really get in shape, sharpen their skills, and try out for the world team in late June. Philadelphia and a man-to-man, -man, a good screen at the top by Lloyd Byrne. Frees up Dave Nelborn down the right wing, drops it back out front for Haggerty. He gets the screen, so it looks like Lloyd Burns, the designated screener. And some good hitting by Andy Wilson. And here comes Wilson. Nice low angle shot as Andy Wilson comes through the center zone. Wilson out of Loyola University, as Tony mentioned, from Baltimore. A really great shooter. Just uh, really can put the ball in a cage, can pick his spots, got good velocity. Uh, we've seen four shots by the wings already. Only one's been on the cage. That one hit. Jaeger in the middle of his midsection. So uh, one of the things that there's, it's easy to be a great goalie when nobody hits the cage. Gary Martin had a man alone in front, and we may have our first penalty as Andy Wilson was decked from the rear. And certainly that goal will not count. And it looks like Rufus Clark, the tallest player on the field for either squad at 6'4, 200, number 32. And here looks like the cross check. He gets him from behind, high in the head. So and there's, we go. there's Rufus out of Harvard. They don't teach you that kind of stuff at Harvard. Boy, they sing too when we play them. Right? <laughs> two minutes, number 32. Two minutes, five minutes. And it will be officially a high stick call. Now, the man advantage unit for Philadelphia is an experienced one right now. With Potts, French, Delegati, Tucker at the top, and the rookie, Wilson. That's Wilson and Tucker. Tony, the basic parameters of the man up as Jaeger makes the save. Spread it out, move the ball, try to get a two-on-one because it's five-on-four. Going after the goalie right now. And Jaeger's in trouble. French comes away with it. He's drilled along the boards. It's a great chance now. You got everybody fighting for the ball. Cox People is wide open. Cox, good head and shoulder. Taking a score, Brad Cox. Brad Cox, his first goal is a wing. The first of many. I'll guarantee one thing, Larry Rosen, every time you see Brad Cox shoot a lacrosse ball, it's going to be within the 4x4. Four four. You've got to make the save against this kid or it's going home. He's not going to miss. Wow. There he is. High shoulder. Hits the top corner. I got a great, a great story, Larry, for you. Last year was his first year coaching with me. He was warming up my goalie the first two days. My goalie comes up to me at the end of the practice and says, Coach, you can't have Coach Cox warm me up anymore. <laughs> he lifts up his jersey, and both his hips are black and blue. Wow. And that's the only place he gets hit, because that's how great of a shooter he is. And, of course, that's the best place to shoot is just above or just below the hip? Right at that hip, right. Right at the hip? you just can't get the stick there. And it's the slimmest part of your body, and it just it's impossible to stop the ball there. Well, that was lovely high long side to beat Jaeger. Welcome to the uh, Major Indoor Lacrosse League New England Blazers. Down a goal. Good, clean win of the faceoff. 
and a good solid body check on Durgle. And Philadelphia clean possession in the person of John Conley, the little guy out of Atlantic City, an Atlantic City native who went to Towson State University, an honorable mention All-American, 5'6", 160, like those little guys. And out front is Matt McGinney, the long hair. And the crowd into Lou Delegati, number 77. There he is with a heavily braced left knee. And he is a powerful fella now working the top. Good spin. Off the cut comes French, but he can only manage a weak shot on. I think the wings are much bigger and stronger than the Blazers, and I think they're going to try to get matchups like they just had, where you got Delgatti and French out there against two smaller players, and they're just so hard to stop that impetus toward the goal. There's John Fay, the experienced one, number 28, tries to kickstart the offense, comes all the way back out to Dave Desco. Out of Syracuse, Desco was the first pick in the expansion draft by New England, so he's got some skills. Low shot, skips on through Bilger, and we're tied at one. Dave Desco is first. Straight on, no screen. And it's a five-holer that rolled right on through Bilger. You're looking at it right from Bilger's eyes. Uh, it's just a big bounce shot that goes right between his legs. You called it, Larry, right in the five-hole. And Kevin Bilger, there's Dave Desco. Uh, do you remember him as a collegiate player? Uh, oh, an outstanding athlete, great player at Syracuse. Uh, they say he's really getting accustomed to this game. He's this the type of athlete that's going to adjust readily and... Uh, he's a good shooter. One thing about a Syracuse player, much like Cotts, the ball's going to be on the cage every time they shoot it, and that's the whole secret to the game. Francis wins the draw cleanly for the Blazers, and here they come tied at one. A bit of a confidence builder as they get a squidgy goal for the first one. And the backs were turned down low. Bill Bergen was. And it's Bob Trockey at a Notre Dame University behind the Philadelphia cage. Wrapped up by Manley and Bilger the possession. New rule this year, once the ball's in the crease, if the goalie is in the crease, no one can touch it. It's his ball. Even if he doesn't have it, it's on the ground. It's his. A 1-1-1 one, 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 right to the floor, rushed by the rookie Gabrielson. He's caught from behind by Francis. And Jaeger kind of ends the tension himself. We played six minutes of action tied at one. And it looked like some quick shifting early on, get everybody involved. Yeah, you got uh, you go up and down three, four times, you're really expending a lot of energy, and you, you got to keep your people fresh. You're running three lines. you got to keep them moving in and out. So you try to do it as you move from defense to offense. Here's Mike Haggerty, number 40, out of Ohio Wesleyan. And Clark at the top, the low shot. Same one that stunned Bilger first time. Handled that. Loose rebound kick, though, to Melbourne. Out of the top, restarted by Haggerty. Switches hands nicely, goes to the left-hand shot, gets his own rebound. And John Tucker puts the wood to him. So far we're seeing New England with a lot of hustle, doing the little things well. They realize that they don't match up well physically, so they're going to try to use their speed, try to use a lot of ground ball. We see the wings are pushing the ball a little bit more than they have been. Here's Brad Cox. That was easy, huh? That's a great coaching move on a great transition off substitution off the sideline box. Cox comes out from the front box as the sub comes in for the defensive box. Gets the ball. You don't catch him. He's quick. Once again, it's on the 4x4. Four four. See him again. He's just got great speed, Larry. He just got... There's so many talents in this kid's repertoire that it's just unbelievable. But, it, but his greatest one of all is that every shot he knows where he's putting the ball and it's, he finds the net. So, seven minutes into the season, Brad Cotts Already a pair on the board. Bill Durgill, number 44, at the center of the screen, is a face-off expert off the Syracuse National Championship team. Interesting philosophy by Ron Fraser, the coach for the Blazers. He doesn't believe that the initial face-off is a real important part of this game. He thinks that it's controlled by the people from the wings. In front is Gary Martin with a shot. And a good high check on Brad Cox. Might have a high stick violation coming up as we see Bilger heading out of his net. We have a slow whistle. It's the same as a hockey rule now. You keep possession until the other team gets possession of the ball. You can take 10, 12, 15 shots. The penalty is still on. Once the defense picks it up, then it's off. And Carruthers, the extra man, gets the shot. Jaeger, the possession. So the delayed penalty now will come. With 7.29 remaining, period number one. The season's underway. The wing's up 2-1. 
Philadelphia one for one with the man advantage. Uh, the penalties in the indoor game, very similar to hockey. Two and five minute penalties, as we see the one that caused this penalty. There is an instigator rule with fighting. You will get the extra minor. And a couple of other things, a pair of majors and you're gone and a pair of goals during the major and the major end, Tony. Right, that brings you back out. And if two people are in the penalty box, the third penalty is an automatic penalty shot for the uh, offensive team. And we're back underway, down to our right score. Just that quickly, I'm not sure John Yeager was aware of it, but Andy Wilson has put his first one on the board just a couple of seconds into the power play. Here's the rookie, Andy Wilson. I'm sorry, John Tucker. All right, I want you to oh, watch that because, out. Larry, if you watch it, it's a fake-out play. It's a fake-out. Wilson is faking like he has the ball through that whole, whole series wow. there, but he doesn't have it. John Tucker's got it. Everybody attention goes to Wilson, and Tucker just shoots in an open goal. Wow. So That's it's a, cheating. <laughs> That's a great play. Uh, Seven minutes, 37 seconds. It is a great fake, and uh, it's, it's been done by Wilson. I have to tell you, last year in a playoff game, University of Pennsylvania against Loyola, Wilson did the same thing to us from behind the cage. Wow. So it's a trick that Andy Wilson brings him, not necessarily taught by the new offensively-oriented assistant coach, Mike Page. That part of the, the repertoire, huh? That's a Canadian little... That's called a box fake. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> There's Durgil losing the face off this trip. That's a lot like the uh, baseball hidden ball trick, you know? That's... And the wing went, with a quick wing score. Wow. <laughs> Good way to get Andy Wilson his first goal on the board. Percentage for your man up team should be about about 25 to 35 percent. Up in the 30s, you're really doing a good job uh, when you're scoring 35, 36 percent of the time. That's exceptional. Most teams are about 20 percent. Screening off the ball, and Dilger goes low to make the save. And a quicker transition. Oh, almost a great outlet from Bilger to kickstart it. As Brad Cott's doing some checking, an open man. Good defensive play. Out of the top. Shot is saved off the elbow by Chenichuk and recovered by Philadelphia. Resch makes a nice screen for Martin. Nice job by Resch to fend off Francis to allow Gary Martin to come down the wing. Yeah, I think Tony Resch, more than any other wing, knows his role on this team. And it's to set screens, it's to play defense, it's to stay back and prevent fast breaks, and it's to set picks. And he did that very well. Instead of trying to get involved uh, with the ball itself, he sees his man pick it up with a good offensive shooter, and he goes and takes the blazer out of the play. Looks like New England beginning to slow tempo just a little bit here as they're beginning to, to feel the, the first nine or ten minutes of emotion has kind of popped out of them. Now they're in for a night of work. Yes, absolutely. I, although I think Frazier's idea is to try to keep the pace up and hopefully wear down the wings and, and get to them in the late fourth quarter. Lovely outlet. Cox to Tucker has a trailer across in McGeady, but he'll hold it out, wait for the line to complete. Now here's the here's the offensive line group uh, for Dave Evans, where I think he can get some of his big players matched up against some of the smaller Blazers. You got Delgatti and French; they don't come much bigger. And it's J.C. Conley at the top, working over Melbourne. It's a straight man-to-man -man defense for Ron Frazier. Delgatti gets a screen. Good jump switch by Lawler. He'll roll behind. Has Han waiting. That's Mark Han. Remember, a 45-second shot clock. It's now down to six. Delegati, the, the bounce shot goes wide. Rebound, Conley, as the shot clock's recycled. And Paul French comes out with it. Nice ground ball rebound job by the wings. Got three different balls. And a delayed penalty shots. to come. Extra man comes out in the person of Manley. It's now six on five. Conley. Off the shoulder, rebound Jaeger, there's the penalty. So it's the fourth penalty of the game. And Philadelphia already two for two on the uh, man advantage. Pretty tightly called game so far. I think the refs are trying to set a tempo here that, uh, you, you know, you're going to play by the rules, and uh, if you have an infraction, it's going to be called against you. And all of them have been against the Blazers so far. So. That'll be Lloyd Byrne heading to the box. And it's a straight slash. 
And with all the stick swinging that goes on, it's tough sometimes to, you know, determine a check from a slash. Yeah, totally up to the uh, referee's discretion. Most coaches don't usually agree. <laughs> and the only other thing we should remind you about the penalties is a face mask pull is an automatic five minutes. Looks like New England playing more of a box set. Yeah, definitely a box defense. That's what uh, Coach Frazier said they were going to do. Uh, once in a while, they were going to go to a go where they're going to cut everybody off and try to play a zone with the last two guys further from the ball. Andy Wilson walks right down the slot. And the loose one recovered New England. And a penalty coming up on Paul French, I believe. Yeah, he definitely grabbed the jersey of... Uh, of Rufus Clark and just pull them backwards on the ground ball. You see it right here. It's a couple of big guys. After he goes by, see, he grabs the <laughs> jersey and pulls them right back toward him. Ref is right there to catch that one. So the one-time Virginia All-American Paul French, brother of the general manager Mike French, the first wing to serve time. There's French. He's had a, uh, he had a tough year last year in terms of the injury. But he suffered to the shoulder? Yeah, suffered a separated shoulder. He's uh, been in rehab all winter long, and uh, he feels that it's really strong. He's worked hard. He, he thinks this might be his, uh, one of his last years of really active playing. Uh, he's also pointing to the World Games this summer because he's going to play for the Canadian national team. He's already represented them twice before in the World Games, and he's really looking forward to that. The Canadians think they have a great chance of bringing home the bacon this year. In 82 and 86, a Canadian world team member told us uh, during an interview session that his first year when his brother, his big brother, his older brother was still on board, he ran around trying to protect Mike and didn't play his own game. And now this year feels like he's more uh, in a position to just play his own game. And hopefully someone will protect him. Hopefully. <laughs> I only have sisters, so I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> They'll play a down man aside, four plus the goalies, as we reach the final four minutes, period number one. But now we get a chance to see how the next And it's John Fay working with Steve McGrath. Looks good so far. There's McGrath. That's an easy rebound in front. Beauty, beauty, beauty. New England, a lovely cross crease pass. By Kelly Carr. What a great pass. A great fake. Gets the goalie lean and then hits far side corner. And, uh, Steve Glover puts it away. See the rebound come out. Carr grabs it, comes in fake and then hits far side talk Tony as we look at a second angle about these stick fakes oh you can do so much uh, with the with the stick and, and every time you move the goalie's got to concentrate on it he thinks it's coming out you're gonna let go in the last minute you turn your wrist and keep it in and then throw it cross case to Glover nobody shoots as well as Glover he's a he's just like Brad Cox he's gonna put it home on you he was their fourth pick guaranteeing some offense out of New Hampshire is there to your mind enough of a lacrosse audience in the Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New England area to, to help the league expand and grow? Do you think it was a good spot to expand? Yeah, I think it's an excellent spot. There's a lot of New England prep, prep schools that play. It's becoming a very popular high school sport in the Boston area. Uh, there's a lot, a great number of uh, the colleges in Division three and Division one up in the New England area play lacrosse. And uh, the Bryant Lacrosse Club, which almost every player for the New England play uh, Blazers represented in the summertime, all have a pretty good following. Looks like Dave Evans will take a timeout. And it's three to two, 341 remaining period number one. If we can make some early assumptions about Philadelphia, they seem to have more of a transition game built into the system this year. Yeah, I think they're quicker. I think they've, Brad Cox has got, gives us more speed. Um, and I think they're looking to push the ball a little bit more. I think Dave Evans is more into the game and what kind of athletes he's using this year. It's his second year coaching. I think Mike Page has brought that kind of transition philosophy to the game. So I, I think they're trying to push. I, I don't see it as much as I thought we would see it yet. But uh, we've got Cox on a great move by the coaching staff off the substitution. I think they're going to try to use that better this year. And that's proven already. Uh, but they're going against a team that was completely drafted based on speed. So they are playing a speed team here tonight. And I, I don't think that the New England's as quick as uh, the New York uh, team is. But they're also known for their speed. So we're seeing that. I, I, we're seeing an upbeat game. Uh, certainly much better than the last two years where we saw the wings come up, settle down, and then go six on six. Very methodical. Now Paul French comes out of the penalty box with the goal scored by Glover. And that means Lloyd Byrne, the only person in the box. So it's back to a five on four, plus the goalies. Philadelphia a chance to retake the two-goal lead. I'm not going to trust Andy Wilson again the rest of the season. John Tucker, Brad Cott, Lou Delegati as they work the perimeter. Tucker at the top has Cott. Off the pipe, the near side pipe. 
God, can he shoot? He sure can. He I had velocity on it the whole works, but here's a breakaway now and a, a chance for Clark, who goes wide and Tucker the rebound. That's Rufus Clark out of Harvard. Length of the floor pass to the cherry picking Delegati. Has Cotts trailing. Has an open wing. Oh, but the pass handcuffed Cotts. Whose fault was that? Well, I'll I tell you a little secret about Brad Cotts. He plays with a pocket in his stick that is like a tennis racket. And that's why he has the accuracy that he has. But for carrying the ball or catching the ball in tough situations, it's very difficult for him because he doesn't have the big pocket. But he, he's got a very tight stick. Tucker. John Tucker has Cotts. Catches just over the top of the pipe. Rebound. Delegati was set up. Couldn't handle it. That was a great look by Paul French. Wilson scores. Andy Wilson. Andy Wilson has got a great two-handed shot. When he can extend his arms away from his body, he probably throws the ball about 96, 97 miles an hour, so he can put it home. Low and hard. Here you see, he gets his arms away, he's got the crank, and it's uh, from down low, the goalie expects it low, and it rises up over the shoulder. You watch him extend those arms away from his body and use those wrists. He's got a good bounce, and it's right up over the stick. In basketball, they call that a skip pass across the very top of the zone from Lou Delegati. Found his man on the weak side, and Wilson loads, fires, and scores. And Big Lou, a crowd favorite. And indeed, the scorers are scoring for Philadelphia. Cotts and Wilson expected to do some scoring. The Seco, the nice flip to the goalie. Kevin Bilger, the quick hit start. And here they come four on two. It's John Tucker, has freed on the right wing. In front and across the crease, and lovely ball movement, and almost put home. Yeah, and I thought Yeager, the goalie for the Blazers, played that very, very well. Anticipated that cross cage feed and was there with his body and really took up a lot of room. And Bill Durgil had the shot. That's Carr at the top, easy one. And Bilger outletting smartly. Freed's got a step. DeSico. DeSico, a bit of a plotter, will bring it back out front. Mishandled by Durgil, the rookie out of Syracuse. And Durgil will step off. Durgil's a face-off specialist that um, Mike French brought to this team specifically for facing off. Also to use him for a role player to do some pick and screen. He's a big boy. He's got good strength. And he can play some offense. Tucker can go one-on-one. -on -one. Has Freed. Freed, the stutter step. Stops, pops wide to the short side. Rebound is loose and recovered by New England, the per person of Peter Smith out of the University of Massachusetts. The last player picked by uh, the Blazers when they did their expansion drafting. Mr. Freed is going to be an interesting player for the Wings. He's had a real good preseason. He's a, a rookie. He's from last UNBC. He's All-American the there. A uh, real quick, great stutter step dodger and, uh, and a real good shooter. So I think we, as he gets used to it and gets broken in, he's going to become a real good player. Lover thinks about the over-the-shoulder look, can't get around Tucker, and throws it away. Green was born in West Germany, in Frankfurt, West Germany. Do they play lacrosse over there? Uh, there's, a, there's a club over there from the military bases. And... Oh, my goodness. Francis walks in and tries to lay it off short side as Bilger leans the other way and just dropped it off wide. Again in front. That was Bob Trockey. Oh, and almost had free cherry picking again. Looked like Bergen just lifted his stick up. And we've got a whistle and a timeout call with 14 seconds left in the period by Ron Frazier. Joey Bergen made a nice play on that. He's a real quick uh, athlete, and he gets his stick up and knocks down a, a definite breakaway for the wings. So far, we can see that New England, uh, I think Larry, is, uh, their offensive uh, philosophy is to work off the ball. It's to set their picks right in the middle of the crease out and then break people off of that and try to throw the passes from the wing side uh, areas off the goal. And uh, they've been doing that pretty successfully. Uh, I think one of the problems they have is that the wings are just stronger and are able to check the people as they run through that offensive area and, and get them off so they can't catch the ball or can't make the real good shot. In, in the middle of that uh, shot that we have for you was Ron Frazier, a Hall of Famer in his own right, the coach. And there's Kevin Bilger, now the number one man with Vinnie Pfeiffer, the goaltender a year ago, moving up the turnpike a little bit. Kevin has shown some good ball movement tonight already. Yes, I, I think Kevin's uh, you know, he's excited about being the starter again. He was the starter in, in the rookie season of the MILL for the Wings. And then Vinnie Pfeiffer got drafted. He came in next year, or last year, was the starter all year long, except for one game. 
And now Bilger's got the uh, call again, and I think he's excited about that. Uh, I think that's a, a very big question, Mike, in the, Mark, in the minds of uh, Mike French and Dave Evans is their goal situation. They've kept four goalies on the team, so I think that's uh, right. the proof in itself that they're still wondering if Bilger is the man for the job. So far, he's done a nice job. See what kind of quick set for New England in the Wing final five attack. seconds counted down a high pick Bilger a little foot save and that'll end period number one so the first period of season three major indoor lacrosse league has come and gone with Philadelphia on top of New England it's four to two back with the second period in just a moment Yeah, and welcome back to the Spectrum. Larry Rosen with Tony Seaman awaiting period number two, the Wings and the Blazers. Of course, we closed the quarter talking about Kevin Bilger, who led the league in save percentage a year ago in limited minutes and only gave up a couple of goals. Here's a lovely save coming up near the end. Yeah, I think it was a good first quarter for him. I think he's got his confidence. He feels good about it. I, I think the first goal that went in between his legs upset him a lot, but he's got it back. He's made three or four uh, nice saves. The, the second goal was certainly not his fault. It was a great cross creek, uh, crease feed. So I think he's got his confidence and, and he's looking. I think also the first period was a very, very effective period for the New England Blazers. I think as a new team, inexperienced, they say to themselves, you know, we can play with these guys. There are your goal scorers. Brad Cox has a pair. John Tucker on that hidden ball trick that faked us all out. And the rookie Wilson got his first. And Bilger made 13 saves out of 15 attempts. And we're underway in period number two with a quick break for Durgill right off the draw. Had Delegati, but Jaeger made the save. Jaeger made 13 saves out of 17 shots in period number one. I noticed on that face-off that the referee moved the face-off uh, people just a little bit outside the circle. They must have be having some problems with the uh, Maddox staying down on the ice. New England did uh, beat Philadelphia in terms of loose balls recovered, and that's their philosophy to be a little bit quicker to the loose balls, but they committed more turnovers in period number one. Clark at the top, works off the screen, goes low, and Bilcher's got the big bag out for him. Took a look for a second to see if anybody was breaking for a long one. And the side court break in the person of Dilger, Dirgil getting a regular shift has French. That is short hop shot, almost handcuffed Jaeger. Real nice cut. The old give and go, and uh, Paul French makes a real nice uh, cut through there, and an excellent pass right to stick. Takes a good shot, and Jaeger comes up with a big save. Jaeger's played well so far. Jaeger's a left-hander, the only left-handed goalie we're going to see in the league this year, I believe. So, uh, I'm not sure that uh, being a left-hander, Larry, or a right-hander, which one's an advantage. I think that most shooters in lacrosse don't see a lot of left-handed goalies. So, in that aspect, I think it is a little bit of an advantage, just because you don't see one, and then every day you're up in practice and you're shooting against a righty. Now, all of a sudden, in the game, you're thrown against the lefty. Mark Hahn had a step, but breaks it back out front for Conley. Goes through one, two, three men. Strong little guy, J.C. Conley. That's Rick Freed. As they work the perimeter, four men on the perimeter. And the screener is Scott Gabrielson. As Conley goes through, Freed walks in off the elbow, I believe, is of Jaeger. McGeady looking for a cutting free. Hahn out front. Low shot is blocked. Shot by a and Delegati will pick it up. Now it's a 5 on 4 for a moment. Delegati. And he had Conley but handcuffed him. Conley could spin over the shoulder score. Lovely J.C. Conley. Oh, baby. Great shot by little John Conley. Welcome back, John. Just a great move. Great move against the wall to avoid the check. Then comes in and puts it behind his back. Watch this. Makes a great move there. Avoids the Rufus Clark's check. Comes in, throws him righty, and then throws the left, back behind the neck. Great shot. How hard is that to control, that shot? That's easy if you practice a lot. Yeah. <laughs> most, drives most coaches crazy in the field game because of your accuracy. Is uh, You got athletes like this who are the best lacrosse players in the world, so they can do things like that. It is 5-2 Philadelphia. J.C. Conley, one of the prettiest goals we've seen. Over the right shoulder. John Conley scores for the wing. Conley had nine goals a year ago. Gabrielson takes the draw and wins it himself and can't recover the loose ball, or can he? It's still loose, picked up by Glover, and now Philadelphia in possession. Broken free by an active Glover. And DeSico takes the, the body, 
and allows a teammate to go get the ball. Yeah, once again, DeSico, like Resch, knows his role, knows his, where he's playing, what he's supposed to do. Here's Tucker by himself. With a good head of steam, off ball pass, lovely to Freed, as Tucker looked left and passed right for Freed. Well, you know how I feel about John Tucker. There's another example of just how, what a great player he is. He sees the field so well as uh, to borrow my phrase from John Chaney, who plays in slow motion. He sees everything that goes on, uses a great head fake. I think we've seen Freed now have three real good opportunities. He's got to become a little bit more analytical with his shooting. He's got to uh, put it off the goalie's hips or off his shoulders. He's got to be a little bit more selective where he's putting the ball. I'm so impressed by Tucker's unselfishness for a scorer. He seems so unselfish. And we've got a penalty coming up delayed against Philadelphia as Jaeger leaves the box for an extra shooter, would-be shooter. It's John Fay. Gabriel's in the loose one. And now we'll take the penalty. Looks like it'll be on Mark DeSico for some extra duty in front of goaltender Kevin Bilger. At the 11.31 mark of period number two, the Blazers will have their second man advantage of the evening. Uh, Ronnie Frazier's got to be upset with just that series of play there because they shot, it comes off, and it's an easy scoop, and he misses it. And now here you see the center of your screen. We see the penalty, and then we see the shot. And uh, Time, three minutes, 29 seconds. There's the Seco right above the crease. Cross check. And it's a cross check. We saw the cross minor. check. There comes the rebound off, and it was an easy scoop for the Blazers. They could have kept possession and keep shooting. And the goalie's out of the cage. It's six on five, but uh, they missed the ball, and the wings pick it up. Philadelphia will play either a box or a diamond. This is the box, and it's Tony Resch's responsibility to keep the front porch clean. Bay without a screen. Yeah, that's where they want him to shoot from. That's, uh, that'll keep Bilger happy all night if he can get him to shoot from there in a man-up situation. Really? New England, though, has done a good job with loose balls. That one rolled by Tucker back to his goalkeeper. Nice, cute, pretty little move by John Tucker to alleviate the pressure. And the long outlet has Tony Rez. Tony will rag some clock. Yeah, spread it out now. Use a lot of the field and make them run and come and get you. And see if you can't get Tucker one-on-one -on -one with somebody. I don't think you want to play him that tight out there. Oh, my, there is in front is Wilson. Three fakes and Jaeger beats him. I like Jaeger, up, down, up, down, got him on the way up the second time. And Wilson probably thought he was ready to raise the stick in celebration of a shorthanded. Yeah, Andy Wilson doesn't miss stuff like that usually. And when you see the goalie on the move like that, the shooter's got to have the advantage. Definitely. Great play by John Jaeger, great reflexes. He has kept his squad in the game. 5-2, five, five minutes into period number two with 40 seconds left on the man advantage. New England's man advantage, and it's a standstill offensive set as Glover fires from well wide, well wide with no screen, perhaps the inexperience of the box game showing on the man up, where it hasn't shown quite as much even strength. Absolutely, yeah, I think that's a very, very good point, and I think they probably, your words are uh, 10 times over by Ronnie Frazier right now on the uh, Blazer event. A, a lazy cross the crease pass intercepted by John Tucker, three on three, and he stops. Has a man cutting. Again, it's free. That's his fourth point blanker, Tony. Yeah, he's just got to start putting these home. That was a great pass by Tucker. Once again, I mean, what can you say about John Tucker, Larry? He's, he's on your extra man. He's on your first line. And he's on your extra man defense team. So, and, and there's what the a look. great pass. Great cut by Free. Great. Uh, that's a great elbow save by Jaeger, too. I mean, he's... Looked like he had the five hole, but went high on Jaeger. Jaeger's impressed us with his ability to handle the high shot. Only three seconds left on the man advantage. And that's effectively killed by uh, the faceoff being down on the Philadelphia end and won cleanly and smartly by Bill Durgill. Yeah, certainly they seem as effective as there. As DeSico, the assistant captain, comes back out. Replaced by Brad Cotts. Philadelphia can look offense. There's Wilson. He looks like he's run a few miles on those legs. Uh, he's an outstanding player. He's a, a great high school player in Canada and in uh, great years at Loyola. They're going to miss him dearly this year. Off the ball goes Carruthers. And neatly tapped back to Jaeger. Kind of nonchalantly recovered. Out on the run comes Dave Melbourne. Good head of steam. Wide open off the pipe, the near side pipe. That's wide open. Was Lawler, and back comes Philadelphia, end to end. The trailer Cotts has it, switches hands. 
Lays it off for Wilson. Low shot is just wide. They had the pipe. I think it had the pipe. So we see Koch in the pipe. And we see Wilson. That's a great pass. Great job by Koch and a lot of uh, heat there. Shots on goal. Advantage Philadelphia 24-18. And as mentioned, John Yeager has kept his club afloat. A three-goal lead. Certainly not that much. And I think of uh, the, uh, not only are they six shots up on goal, but much better shots on goal. That's an easy one for Jaeger, though, off the stick of uh, Carruthers. John Jaeger. Carruthers out of uh, Drexel University, Westchester High School. Makes his home in Wilmington right now. And a full line change is Kelly Carr from UMass. I think, Scott, with John I think Scott Carruthers is one of the best athletes, best lacrosse players to ever play at Drexel University. He's outstanding. Uh, he was giving me a lot of heat the other day for not <laughs> recruiting him, but I wasn't at Penn when he got recruited. Two-time All-ECC player, honorable mention, All-American, as Faye comes down the near wing. And there's no traffic at all in front of Bilger. No, they, they're not doing that. They're, I think, you know, they're looking for a lot of picks off the ball. They'll let Faye go by himself one-on-one. -on -one. They figure he's got the speed and can do it, and then they'll look inside. Here's a four-on-two if they hurry. Gary Martin down the wing. Has three trailers to choose from. Wilson in front to Resch, and he scores. Cody Resch, no goal. Resch is in the crease. No goal, no goal. Well, we had a rare one out of Tony Resch. But we had a great over-the-shoulder pass by Andy Wilson. He's going to be a crowd favorite here. Look at his pass. Behind his back to Resch, and Resch puts it away, and they call him in the crease. That's a tough call. That's a good call. And just that quickly, the Blazers come back and score. While we're looking at the replay, Walt Cataldo, an old nemesis out of Brown University, walks right on in and scores to make it 5-3. See, while everybody's down there for celebrating for the wings, the goalies are given immediate possession by the uh, referee. They throw the length of the field. They hit Cataldo coming out of the box, and he puts it home at the other end. Uh, so the, you can't waste any time arguing over an official's call. You've got to get yourself back on defense. Kevin Bilger wanders all the way out from his crease to midcourt for a, a couple of words to referee Scott Point Boyle. The goal is scored by number 22, Walt Cataldo. Walt Cataldo, a Brown University product. Yes, very, very good player. Football and uh, lacrosse player. Captain of the football team his senior year. Captain of the lacrosse team. Uh, outstanding uh, athlete. An Ivy education, a football player, a lacrosse player. Where does he find time to study? Tony Resch did the same thing at Yale, a football player and a lacrosse player. He told me that lacrosse uh, kind of was just for fun, and it, it kept emerging and emerging, and now he's madly in love with the game. And I think he also mentioned to us that he found his marks were much better when he was playing At both sports. sports, exactly. Right off the draw, score! A cleanly one face off, and Bill Bergen goes in and goes long side on Bilger. And it's a single goal lead now. And once again, once again, the uh, point of Ron Frazier, how important the people are coming in from the wings. And there's Bergen with a great quickness, picks it up, he makes some nice fakes puts it by Bilger after a commitment. And Bilger dives on out at it. So it is five to four with 7.08 remaining, period number one. The Wings will try to catch their breath. Two goals in a matter of four or five seconds. We'll come back to the spectrum in a moment. Red Hot Philadelphia Wings are flying high and ready to kick them again. Bruce Light presents major indoor lacrosse of the afternoon. February 12th in the spectrum. The Philadelphia Wings versus the Baltimore Thunder. The sports adventure of a lifetime. Lightning fast. Gut-wrenching excitement. Crashing. Boarding. Cross-checking. No holes barred. Only the tough survive. The sports adventure of the future. Ah! Light presents the Wings and the Thunder Sunday, February 12th. You've got to see it to believe it. Back at the spectrum, another angle on that goal. Is this a too early of a commitment by Bilger as he dives out? Yeah, I think absolutely. He tries to go out and cut the angle, and I don't, I don't think that's what's going to do in a 4x4 four four, uh, goal. Stay there and use up as much of it with your size and let him hit the, hit the angle. Especially when he's coming in left-handed like that, and he's almost by his good angle shoot, shot. But Bergen puts it away. He's out of Hobart University. What do we know about Hobart University? Division three, national champions, nine years in a row. Wow. <laughs> those, uh, those two goals came six seconds apart. And a confidence builder for the Blazers. You get out of the first half close. Yeah, now here they are back again. So they, they really did find out in the first period we can play with them. And now they're proving they can play with them. 
and kind of a five-man spread. Bergen, the goal scorer, nice little give and go. Glover goes over the shoulder. Had a pair of opportunities recovered out front by Todd Francis. And here comes Delegati. Has a cherry picker in Mark Hahn. And boy, you called it there. Mark Hahn, if he is one thing, he's probably the cherry picker in the league. He was great doing that for Baltimore. He's here now. He's really happy, by the way, being here with the Wings. He, he likes Dave Evans' approach. He likes the guys in the team. He likes the whole attitude. He thinks it's really cohesive, and he's just thrilled to be here. And I think Lou Delgado, he felt the same way midseason last year when he was traded here. And Lou scored six points in his first game to welcome to herald his arrival. Mark Hahn at 32, one of the senior citizens right now. There's Melbourne working on his own. Not much develops off that. A little bit of a dunk shot attempted. And a kick by Byrne. He's doing everything, and then Bilger comes out with it to McGeady. And Mark Hahn on the far wing says, come on, let's move it. J.C. Conley finally to Hahn, goes low and scores. Nice bounce shot, real nice bounce shot. He got Jaeger down, makes that skip bounce where he gets it to come up off the turf, and it comes right up over the stick. That was a real nice break, and just like basketball, the wingman had the ball and got it to the middle to Hahn. Passes over to Hahn, and now watch the skip bounce. It's a short bounce. It's not in by the goalie. The ball bounces about 10 yards outside of the crease. Puts away. There's the middle man. Giving it off. To the outside. Now Hans down. He gets the skip and wow. the bounce goes by. It's real nice velocity and uh, Jaeger doesn't have a shot at it. And Mark Hahn won the Commissioner's Appreciation Award a year ago for his service to the league. His attitude and disposition. Second in the league with 21 goals. And welcome to Philadelphia. An All-American out of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Back to a two-goal lead, a big goal for Philadelphia. As they were stung by two goals within six seconds. There's John Tucker calling a set play, hand above the head. And it looks like Mark DeSico is uh, setting the screen. That's a sweet-looking set play for Freed as DeSico picked his man off couldn't handle it and John Tucker plays the body then the ball yeah there's where his size and just his power just pays off there's some nice move little back move. pass from Freed and here's Tucker to reset switches hands weak shot long and wide but Freed can't come up with it Bilger's going to commit he beats it there's Kevin Bilger good judgment by Bilger lovely little bounce pass good catch by Tucker cross to DeSico that would have been sweet. Yeah, what a great pass again by Tucker. He's just threading the needle tonight. He's just, his eyes are so great. He finds people, and then he can put the ball there. It's a Larry Bird of lacrosse. And there's John Fay controlling at midcourt. With 425 and counting a low-scoring first half, relatively, 6-4 Philadelphia. Larry Rosen with Tony Seaman, coach University of Pennsylvania, happy to bring you the opener of year three of the major indoor lacrosse league. Bilger kickstarts the offense up the near with Tucker. Lovely look. There goes Manley. Oh, and off the stick bar or elbow of Jaeger. What a pass by Tucker. Unbelievable. He should have seven or eight assists. Jaeger's taking them all away from him with great saves. But once again, the wings just have to be a little bit better in close to that one-on-one -on -one situation. If they're going to play the upbeat game, the transition game, you got to be able to put that ball away in close. Freed's had several chances. Manley had one there, many of them from Tucker. Enjoying the tempo of Philadelphia this year, Tony. Yeah, much better. Much, and you can't do that unless you have the people to do it. They couldn't do it the last two years. Now they've got Hahn and Cotts and Tucker and, you know, the Manley and Conley, and now you're upbeat and you're going, and you can move those people up and down. And not quite as much double shifting. It looks as if uh, the coaching staff able to spread the playing time, at least here in half number one and get some of the young people involved. Yeah, a lot better balance. Uh, Tucker's line's got two rookies. Uh, Cox's line's got one, and then the other line, the third line's got uh, all veterans and a little bit more size. An easy one to beat the shot clock. Jaeger. Andy Wilson's got it. Uses the boards for Crothers. Score! Now, it looked like Wilson intentionally used the board. I think he did. It was We'll give him credit for it anyway. Yeah. He did a real we, smart heads-up play. If we can back the replay up until the possession, pick it up. There it was, right there. He felt, he felt it coming on his back, kicks it off. Scott Carruthers picks it up. It's a real nice bounce shot down. Once again, I think what we're starting to see on Jaeger, 
is to bounce the ball away from him. In other words, further out away from the crease and uh, get him to commit down to his knees and then it goes up over top. When it's real in close to his toes and his feet, he makes some really With nice saves. tonight, all ready for the win. There's 55, Andy Wilson. We have Scott Crothers scoring the goal. P.A. announcer Lou Nolan uh, gave it to Andy Wilson, but I believe it was Crothers. I think it was. Five, not 55, just that quickly off the bar. New England comes back that quickly off Bob Trotty. Quick transition, though, for Philadelphia. Down the slot came Wilson, recovered by Gary Martin. No look pass for Wilson, and he's checked solidly to the floor as he just gets it off wide near side. Brad Cotts, he's just a little bit wide of the far pipe. And New England standing still. That is four and five opportunities now for Philadelphia. One thing I think that we see in this transition game that, that has to be brought out is, yeah, they brought in some people with speed, and yeah, they've got some faster players, but, you know, they move the ball. The ball's moving so much better this year. They're looking for the open people, and then they're hitting them. There's another example. Gary Martin just a foot or so long out of Andy Wilson. Andy Wilson hangs his head in despair. He knew he had Gary Martin on a breakaway. You don't have to be fast to be a transition upbeat team. What you have to have is people who are willing to run off the ball, create open spaces, and then people with the ball to find those people. And this year we're seeing that being done, and I think that's the Mike Page addition here to the coaching staff that's, that's getting that done and it's really it's fun to see and this is going to be a hell of a wings team because of it and great cohesion for an opener the cox line has three even strength goals the mark Hahn line has two even strength goals john tucker's group has yet to score even strength and you know that's going to come down the road they've had many opportunities has manly and free there's clark in front bilger stands his ground it's over his near shoulder Crease violation. And there's Byrne. He's lost the R off his jersey, but that is Byrne in the crease. So it's still 7-4. Again, a 45-second clock for Lou Delegati. I think one thing we're seeing by the Blazers, they have an excellent six-on-six -six offense off the ball without picks, just beating people back door. And on uh, cuts when they turn their heads, they've really had some uh, easy Last shots. Of play in the first half. All right, 58 on the game clock, 42 on the shot clock. See if Philadelphia holds. Conley will go one-on-one. -on -one. He's got a great jab step. And that's a good spot for the shot in the crick of the elbow, but Yeager gets down. And Philadelphia one last chance. Once again, a real good look. Saw the open man, just didn't throw a real good pass. And coming up at halftime, we'll meet and greet and visit with the president of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League, Chris Fritz. But first, Dave Evans will take a timeout to set something for the final 32 seconds. And let's take a look uh, for the uninitiated at the differences between the indoor and the outdoor game. For those of you joining us for the first time. Well, we got 10 players in the field game versus six players in the box game. You have the five forwards, as they're called, and the goalie in the box game. Uh, the field dimension, certainly, on the, uh, we have a little bit larger than a football 60 yards by 120 in the field game. The hockey dimensions in the arena uh, in the indoor game. And finally, probably the biggest single difference to the offensive player is the six by six goal in the field game, the four by four goal in the box game. So a, a smaller area uh, to shoot at. We have the offsides call in the field game. You have to have three players at the offensive end. You have to have four players at the defensive end. Whereas in the box, there's no such thing as offsides. It's go anywhere you want to go. Mark Hunt makes a living cherry picking, we said. <laughs> and uh, finally, there's not a shot clock in the field game. There is in the indoor game, which means you have more action offensively. And there's the goalkeeper in that four by four. It's John Yeager. Philadelphia spreading the floor now for the final 25 and counting. Lou Delegati going one on one. Delegati with the ball. Oh, oh. Works behind. Delayed penalty coming up against okay. New England. Tucker almost has a rebound. And once again, they have to get possession before this slow whistle's over, and the Wings keep it so they can keep firing here. French off the face mask. Scores on the rebound. Yes, he does. What a Score it. great job by Paul French. That's called hard work. That's perseverance. Keeps his nose dirty. That's an all-John Madden team right there. Two seconds left in the period. Just works hard. 
Uh, there you see the rebound. French goes in among traffic, wow. gets the rebound, puts it away, goes into the crease, but after the ball is in the goal, so it is a goal. Interesting that he pulled the rebound off the goaltender's mask. The anchor's not going to control the ball if you get him up around the mask, although I'm sure you don't coach that. Right, right. No, not at all. But a, a great job getting that rebound and, and putting it home and using his size once again. And I think that's where New England is is at the biggest disadvantage against this wing team is bulk, size, strength. And with two seconds remaining, we'll play it out for you here at the end of the first half. Philadelphia scoring the last three goals of half number one to take an 8-4 lead. And Paul French has to be thrilled to get back on the board. Yeah, it's a nice early start for him, and uh, he's in the game. I think Frazier is complaining down here in the uh, Blazer Oh, bench. Still, it's still a penalty, huh? Right. So a two-minute holding penalty at 14.58, despite the goal scored by Philadelphia. Right, that is a rule in the, uh, in the indoor box league that if you cause a foul while the while it's in play and then a goal is scored you still serve the time for the new foul and so there was a slow whistle at the time the French scored that goal as a general rule the uh, rules are meant to try to help increase the offense just keep that in your own mind you'll understand why the rules are the way they are Philadelphia has an 8-4 lead scoring the last three goals of the first half major indoor lacrosse league season three underway Philadelphia on top by four at the half we'll come back with the president of the mill in a moment It's a good-looking crowd. We're set for third period action. And our associate producer, Paul Jolovich, reminds me, New England's never won when they trailed at halftime. <laughs> Nor have they ever lost. Or have they ever lost. <laughs> well, this was advertised as the grudge match of the century, I that's think. That's right. And, uh, it's pretty interesting when they've never played each other before, but certainly the next time, it might just be that. Arch rivals. So here's where you really want to control the face-off. you got a man-up situation. Durgill puts it between his legs. The Australian technique, and it's wing ball. The old Australian technique, eh? That's what it's called. Once again, we see uh, the Blazers in a box in their man-down defense. It's Tucker at the top. Casa Delegati near side. French and Wilson far side. Philadelphia two out of three on the man advantage in the first half. Now Tucker will go through. And screen off, lovely play for French Delegati. The loose run, just wide, long side. And a lazy pass in front. John Tucker, one of his few rare, poor decisions, leads to a two-on-one the other way. Corsi goes low and, and he, builds a protect. You know what helped so much there was John Tucker in the corner made that bad pass and got all the way down so he could be the second man and take the offside guy out of the play so that the shooter with a man on him had to shoot at a bad angle, Bilger had it covered. Once again, a hustle by John Tucker. Still 55 on the man advantage, Philadelphia. Cots. Cots with, with that tennis racket. Little baby cradle he's got there. Delegati, the one-timer, fans on it. It breaks it loose, though, for Cots. Finally picked up by Lloyd Byrne. And here comes Byrne, missing the R in the back of his jersey. Has a man as Wilson got caught. And Kevin Bilger bails him out on Rufus Clark. End to end Delegati. Cots, if he can handle, has one. The no Ager has no stick. And here's Delegati, one on three. Kicked out. By Yeager. And a too many men on the floor penalty coming up against New England, I do believe. And they caught Kazi, the extra man number 35, with 14 seconds remaining on Hills Minor. We'll see who goes and serves the uh, too many men. It is Byrne arguing, but heading for the box. So five on three the set. And I assume a bit of a triangle defense set up that you change your offensive flow five on three. Not really. I think now you can, it's just easier to create the uh, two on three. What you don't want to, or two on one, what you don't want to do is take the outside shot now. You want to work it a little bit and try. You've got about, I think, 16 seconds or 14 seconds before the, the first penalty is over. So you really want to use this situation where you're two men up. Still caught Tucker, Delegati, Wilson, and French. And here we go, five on three. And it is a packed in threesome for New England. Tucker and Cox. Delegati is there. It's Paul French. 
Great pass by Lou Delgatti. Great pass. He paid for it. He got crushed. If, you, if there's such a thing as crushing Lou Delgatti, but he makes a great cross speed, cross crease speed to uh, Paul French, and Paul French puts it away. Here you see he draws. Nobody plays him. Then he looks across. He gets really decked. What? I, how French got that by? I'll never know. He had no angle whatsoever. We'll take another look at it here. Great camera work once again. Lovely. Now, I'm not sure if you get any better than the prism cameraman, huh? But really, and our producer downstairs, John McLaughlin, what a great job. Paul French. Paul French is second. As Delegati got the assist and never saw it go in, he'll have to catch it on prism, too. It's 9-4. Biggest lead of the day belongs to Philadelphia at the 13.05 mark. And now we're back. Should be an even strength. And the Eagles the Plus Club will donate $250. Still a man down. Yes, sir. Yeah, they're one man. The wings are one man up. Oh, there was one second left on the original penalty when it went in. One second left on the penalty. So the wings, having scored four unanswered goals between the second and third period, still have a five on four. A chance to go 10 for good buddy against the New England Blazers. Cots near side. Across to Wilson. Back at the top is Tucker. A tightly packed box of New England. No look to Delegati. Left hand save by Jaeger. Great save by Yeager off Delegati. Delegati again is alone. Another great save. How about Yeager with that left paw sticking out? Oh, boy, well, Yeager's just uh, being acrobatic in there right now. Two great saves. Lou Delgatti's got to say, what the name of God do I got to do here? Cots off the near post. And the Wilson shot ranges far wide. And here comes Clark. Yeah, Rufus Clark really played the boards well on that one. Oh, he gets decked by Tucker. Hello. Hello. And Bilger length of the floor to French looking for the hat trick. And Tucker and Clark eye to eye behind us. As play continues, Tucker and Clark still yapping. Yeah, Clark really made about a 10-yard run at Bilger well after Bilger got run, rid of the ball. And Tucker says, you don't do that to my goalie. And, and Tucker took care of Rufus him. Clark coming up field. Tucker had nailed him originally. There's the retaliation by Tucker after Clark had hit Bilger. Which is almost a shame because referee Scott Boyle had the penalty on a late hit, had his arm in the air, and now Tucker's got to go out too. So uh, it really doesn't help out. But I think Tucker has told the Blazers, hey, leave Bilger alone. And this is the first hit. This is legit by Tucker. Yeah, Bang. Great hit. A and right then, shoulder in the chest. Rufus Clark says, uh, you know, a little dignity hurt here. I'm going to come <laughs> get the goalie. And then Tucker says, oh, no, you don't. And, of course, uh, Clark was already on his way off. There's a, a look at the handsome face of John Tucker, the MVP a couple of years ago, showing a lot of courage with the helmet off down on the field. I think I see a little blood there on the cheek, maybe a little bit of a cut. Uh, he's certainly known to get his nose dirty a few times. Oh, yeah. His career here in three years with the MIALL. Oh, yeah. So these will be coincidental minors and already an extra man in. So it's 43 seconds man advantage Philadelphia on that too many men on the floor penalty against uh, New England earlier. And we're also in a situation with two men in the box for the New England Blazers. If they do get another penalty now while the two men are in the box, that's an automatic penalty shot for the wings against the Blazers. So that's an interesting concept if that can uh, show up here. And there was a mistake made in that second period when they allowed a Philadelphia player to come out of the box after a four on four goal was scored against Philadelphia. And uh, the referees told us at halftime that uh, should that situation come up again, the coincidental, non-coincidental minors would just continue to run and Philadelphia would not wind up with a power play, much like the hockey rule. Right. We're now we're going to see a situation where Tucker, the center man on the man, on the man up for the Philadelphia Wings, is in the penalty box. And we see that uh, Coach Evans puts out Gary Martin as the center man. But it's going to be a face-off. I think the ball was loose uh, when the uh, fouls got called, the simultaneous fouls got called. If that's the case, Durgil's out there to face off. And again, that man, John Yeager, has kept his team close, at least this close. The face-off will be at the point where the ball was when the whistle blew to stop play. So that's why they're off off to the center uh, of the center circle. And Durgil, once again, you see his ability to come up with the face-off. Wins it clean to French. French takes the hit and breaks it free. And it's recovered by Corsi. Goes three on three. And a little bounce shot in front handled by Bilger. Has a man in Delegati. Two on no. French 
for the hat trick. Got it by French. Real nice French. job by Lou Delgatti. Great look by Bilger. Sees him 60 yards downfield. Hits him with a great pass. Lou Delgatti looks cross field to French and puts it away. See Louis there. Catches the ball from Bilger and then sees French inside. French goes in. Once again, really nice technique by Paul French. You got your stick up high. Goalies are taught to match your stick. So with his stick up above his shoulder, Jaeger's going to be up high, and he takes the bounce shot and puts it through the five hole. That's how it's done, boys and girls. It, <laughs> Paul French looked like he took a little look at his own cradle to see just what his possession looked like. What could that have been? Oh, my God, I got the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a technique, you know. I don't think so. But he did take a look back. Yeah, he at sure did. Just to see if it was rolling on him a little bit, perhaps. And now Scotty Gabrielson, the rookie out of Princeton, New Jersey, will take the face off as we tell you that Paul French has scored the game's last three goals, a natural hat trick. And a lovely little scrub. Scott Boyle in there to break this one up uh, real fast, along with uh, Domenico. Yeah, Mark Domenico and Hill going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, nose to nose following the draw. Not too much came from that. And we'll do it all over again. Scott Boyle, the referee, putting the ball down, had the uh, national championship game last year as one of the referees. So we'll face it off again. Syracuse. Who did Syracuse play? Syracuse played the University or Cornell. Thank for you. The championship. I knew it was some unknown uh, Ivy League squad. <laughs> National champion. And they, of course, had to beat another unknown uh, squad from the Ivy League to get to that game, huh? Yeah, they did. That was a heartbreaker. And Quakers came moments from the championship game. Here's Manley working the near side, loses possession. And Jaeger able to come up with it. Great Manley tries to contest. Good hit on the near side boards by, the wing. by Carr on Manley. Here. And it's broken out to Desco. Davey Desco, who was on that championship squad out of Syracuse. We'll slow it down. And it's a bit of a walk it up pace now for New England. 36 Kelly Carr for the uh, Blazers. He throws his body around. He's not a real big kid. He's got a real baby face when you see him without his helmet on. And he throws his body around. Desco has a, a shot low, handled by Bilger. Double team now. And broken free by DeSico and Manley, where Carr comes up with it. A lot of standing around, though, on the offensive side. Now they split into a 2 3 set offensively. And 101 moves out of John Fay. Fay has not gotten loose much tonight. Now they've done a nice job on him. And one of the things we haven't mentioned here in the third period is Bilger's done a real nice job. Bilger's come up with six or seven real solid saves. And uh, it's allowed them to get the ball upfield quickly and transition and uh, put it away. And Trotchy from uh, Notre Dame University at midfield as the line change is complete. Philadelphia will not Trotchy change the on the go. And Francis now at the top. And the Blazers have not scored in 13 minutes of action. There's Francis working near side. Comes behind. Dumps it out front. And again, the shot clock is now recycled without... Uh, somebody realizes that they say uh, we have a serious shot clock problem. Yeah, they made two line changes in that in that 45 seconds without ever taking a shot. So, and there is the shot clock. It's a 45 second clock, and what happened was somebody reset it to 45 each time New England changed their personnel. And of course, you don't reset it unless there's a shot on. And they'll roll it down, make sure it works. Take just a moment for that. Whether or not it was human error. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like you to join the win for. Well, they seem like they got it together, so. Uh, I guess they're checking that out. Delgatti's having a little catch here, make sure everything is good. <laughs> and Philadelphia is still not a, a dynamic scoring squad. Not just yet. They've got 10 on the board through two periods plus five and a half minutes. 
One but thing they have done that Dave Evans said there's going to be a big philosophy that, that Mike Page has brought in is that they're going to try not to play a lot of settled six or five on five across, and they have done, been able to do that today. Everything's been transition, a lot of push the ball up, a lot of not ever getting the other team really settled. A few times they have gone settled, people like Hanley and uh, Tucker and uh, people like that have tried to beat their man or look for the uh, offside cut, and they've done that very effectively. We've got 9.16 remaining, period number three. And the officials apparently trying to figure out what to do in terms of possession. It was a 45-second shot clock violation officially on the floor, but Ron Frazier wants to know, hey, the clock itself didn't go all the way down. Why should it be a New England ball? And Scott Boyle says, because I said so. <laughs> so here we go. They're trying to straighten everything out, explaining it to both uh, officials. Once again, you can tell it's the first game of the year. Uh, the referees getting experienced as well as everybody else. Build your save percentage last year, the highest in the league at 77-2, is right around 85% for the first two and a half periods. And here comes Philadelphia, down to our right. The screen is set for the pop out by Mark Hogg. And the shot clock is indeed rolling. French has three already. Had Delegati cutting, blocked off. And resets the top. Philadelphia spreading the floor. Conley goes one-on-one -on -one around. Glover, left shoulder save. That's on the back of the net. And the ball's still in play. And Conley's Michael got that great little stutter step and uh, just gets by people. So uh, just a nifty little move. Glover, stripped by the long-haired McGeady. And here they come three on two. Over the shoulder, Conley to McGeady. Has Delegati. Delegati in, shot off the wide pipe. Rebound, Hines scores! Great job. Lou, Lou Delgatti, great setup. Hits the pipe. Get a ricochet, good garbage. Over to Hahn, and Hahn puts it away. They're taking care of Mr. Hahn tonight, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Here's Delgatti, gets the pipe on the far side. There's the pipe. And there's Hahn putting it away. Left-handed shot by a right-handed shooter. That's the value of going out against the wall and using both hands, learning how to play with both hands. Just kind of meandering his way down the slot, waiting for the loose one, and Mark Hahn comes right up with it. Number four, Mark Hahn. You know, he's long been labeled as throughout his lacrosse uh, career as the garbage man on lacrosse. <laughs> you can see why. Durgill this time fills it himself. And that is the fifth even strength goal by the Han line. Brothers can't handle out front is Gary Martin. He's been quiet tonight. Behind to Durgil, intercepted by Jaeger. Boom! Scotty Carruthers puts the wood on Byrne. And Delegati has five assists tonight, as Lou Delegati. Several on French's goals. He's got assist on each of the last three. Now have a seven-goal lead. And it's 11-4, longest lead of the night. And it looks like the Blazers are beginning to tire dramatically. Haggerty works the far side. Bilger off the chest, an easy block. And, uh, Coach Fraser mentioned to me before the game tonight that uh, they've been working on a very small arena. I think you're starting to see that take its toll. Um, I don't think any team in the, in the league has practiced as much and as consistently as the Wings have. Carruthers! As Jaeger seemingly leaning back, using his offhand to hold the pipe and kind of keep his balance. Looked like he almost yeah, leaned himself into the goal, but kept it aside with seven minutes remaining, period number three. 11-4 Philadelphia. It's been a clinical performance for a season opener by Philadelphia. John Thay at the top. And there's been nothing easy for New England all night long. No, it really hasn't been. They're doing a lot of picking on the ball for the person with the ball and then look for the outside guy coming off the other pick from the far side and they, they've been running that all night long but they haven't been getting good shots off it though Gary Martin strips behind he had blocked the shot off his back the shot from Schmitz and there's Carr in a little bit too deep to get a good angle shot so Bilger just kicks it out with the left foot and Tony Resch cleaning house make that uh, yeah that's Tony Resch 34 Joined by Cots. That shot wide hits off the back of the pipe as it hits off the Flyers' wives' carnival logo behind. And it breaks out to Andy Wilson. Here comes Wilson one-on-one -on -one with the experienced John Fay. Fay doesn't take the fake, 
and waits for help to arrive. Yeah, you don't have a lot of time in this game in a small confined arena uh, to make a lot of fakes. And now the clock has uh, given us a bit of a problem again. The clock has stopped at 6.07, and it looks as if there's been a timeout called by Ron Frazier. No, they're going to keep play going even though the clock has stopped. Nope, oh, clock restarts for us at 6.03. So the official clock must be running downstairs. And here's New England. A double clutch and a windup, and no chance to get the shot off. Lovely defense, Philadelphia, out of John Tucker. That's inspirational. Uh-oh, loose one comes out. Rebound in front, left pad save Philadelphia by Bilger. That was a great save by Bilger, and a, and a good scoop up. Interference with his stick, so they give it to uh, the wings, and now we get the timeout. And indeed, the timeout charge to timeout. the officials. So Philadelphia stretched it out. It's an 11-4 lead, 531 and counting. Period number three, back to the spectrum in a moment. Been quite some time since somebody beat Kevin Bilger. Here he comes up big again, Tony. Yeah, he's, he's just done a really nice job tonight. He anticipates that well and slides across. That was a nice cross-crease pass. And he got there and then makes a check, scoops. It's his ball in the crease. And uh, they interfere with him after he picks it up. So we're going to start off with the wings having the ball. One of the things I think, Larry, that, that we've pointed out several times for the wings is that the uh, people like Freed, Ricky Freed, and uh, the uh, Scott Gabrielson kid, they've got to learn a little bit more about the shooting in this four by four cage. Well, when you look at New England, you got to realize that their whole team is new at this game. So once again, it's a, it's a nice way for Bilger to start because he hasn't got the old time experienced player shooting against him. And that's helping him, but he's doing a good job. Besides, I'm not taking anything away from him. I think he's doing a nice job. But it's certainly one of the reasons that I think New England's offense has been effective and it's given him some shots, but they haven't learned yet. And that's gonna take time really where to put the ball and how to put it away in this game. And the Tucker line, John Tucker's line, yet to get the, an even strength goal as Freed and Gabrielson have had trouble along with Manley with their putaways. Still 11-4 Philadelphia, though. New England behind. And they just seem can't get anything going in front of Bilger. Most of their stuff from wide angles, like that one by Melbourne, which is well wide. Shot clock still runs down to eight. And Philadelphia breaks it free. Shot clock is at four. And it's 3-2-1 as Bilger gets possession. So another excellent defensive set out of Philadelphia out of the Tucker line. Yeah, they're, and they're playing a real good man-to-man -man defense on, on everybody. As you said, any shot they're giving up is a, is a wide shot. And Bilger says, come on. And do they miss Vinny Pfeiffer? Apparently not right now. Sorry, Vinny. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell you better when they play New York or Washington, uh, Washington or Baltimore. And it's the Delegata unit with Han. Nice walk by Conley as he walks around in front. And good anticipation by McGeady. Out front to Conley. Look at this rebound. High in the air. And into the New England bench. Possession New England with 339 and counting. Period number three, Philadelphia in command. John Fay beaten up by McGeady. Breaks it free, but he has no help. I think it's been so long since they really got a chance to play that the Wings just want to play, and they're playing very hard, and they've kept up a good active intensity. They're playing a real good defense, and here's another break. French is open. Here it goes, French. Off the left elbow of Jaeger. Is French bid for his fourth. And on the near side, it's broken free for Smith's underhand little shovel pass to Desco. And New England settles it down, down by seven goals, three minutes and counting, period number three. And very little movement in front of Kevin Bilger. I think we're looking at a very, very tired New England team right now. A one-hand little weak shot recovered in front by Desco. There's another example of real nice offense to, get, to get a shot and then make a lousy shot. Here's a great break by Hahn. Hahn all by himself. He goes low and wide. By Jaeger. Jaeger gets it with the waffle board far to his uh, right side. Mark and Hahn kind of gives it away to Jaeger that time. He says, I dropped my stick. I'm probably shooting low. That's what goalies are taught to do, match sticks. And he makes the save. Francis picks the loose one up off the board. And a nice little foot save off about the ankle, the right ankle of Kevin Bilger. 
Bilger showed good quickness tonight. Gave up a cheapie early on. But has settled down very nicely. New England has now so gone 20 minutes, minutes without a goal. And this could be a shutout period. And you start to make saves and you get more confident. You start believing that you're going to save everything and you, and you start saving everything. And, and to shooters who can't score, you start looking for corners. You start missing more often. And uh, it all adds up to a better night for the goalie. And Bilger's having an outstanding uh, third quarter, no doubt about that. Steve Glover's shot never reaches uh, within 25, 30 feet of the net as it was kicked aside by Scotty Carruthers. And here's Andy Wilson. There's Andy. As Tony told you, a Canadian native. And a graduate assistant now at Loyola University. Very talented player. Carruthers tries to go it alone. Resh breaks it free. Gary Martin can't pick it up. Looks like a little polo match out there for the moment. Jaeger outside his net. Nice move, Brad Cotts. Alone in front. Carruthers can't get it off. Gary Martin comes out with it in the final minute of play. In the third. And Gary Martin wanted a penalty call. And Wilson throws it up high and wide. As Francis got a solid piece of Andy Wilson. Good head of steam for Kinnichuk, and he scores on the bouncer. And Bilger angry with himself. 39 seconds away from a shutout period. Chanichuk walks down the right wing and beats Bilger on the bounce. Yeah, bounce that goes, I think, right in the five hole, right between his legs again. Uh, you see, when he sucks down, he keeps those feet wide, and his knees don't get down. He doesn't keep the stick right in the middle of his uh, of the five hole, and that's where it beats him. Chinachuk had his head up all the way. There he is. Yeah, Chinachuk's a real nice little uh, bounce shooter, and uh, he can put the ball away. So, New England went 21 minutes, 29 seconds of play without a goal until Bruce Chanachuk out of Johns Hopkins University gets them on the board in period number three. Chanachuk was the second player picked by New England in their draft. And gives Steve Glover the assist. Final 35 seconds now, the third period. Philadelphia must maintain the intensity. Goals come quickly in the indoor game. Dorjell certainly done a nice job for the Wings tonight facing off. He's certainly a, a good acquisition by uh, Mike French, and uh, certainly he got him to face off and win face offs, and that's just what he's doing for this team. What a fake by Tucker. Rebound Carruthers uh, couldn't come up with it, make that Gabriel sin. Freed now looking for his first. Got it. Long five by Ricky Freed. Hits the high, high uh, top corner there on the offside of the stick. A real nice shot. I think he got a little bit of his defenseman's hip to kind of screen it out. There it is. He drops his stick. Goalie goes low. Shot goes high. Once again, he, he hit that slip bounce. It's going to come off the turf a little bit higher. And that's what Jaeger's had trouble with tonight. And there he shakes hands with John Tucker. Said, I told you I'd put one away sooner or later. That's the first even strength goal by the Tucker line. His first tonight, the assist number 25, Mark Masico. Five seconds left, one last opportunity as the third period now will come to a close. And it's a strong one for Philadelphia. They break it open to a 12-5 lead. The wings over the Blazers. The final stanza's coming up. The one consistency, Philadelphia certainly has had consistent offense. They put four goals on the board in period number one, period number two, and once again, in period number three. This time to break it open, a 4-1 advantage in the third period. It's now 12-5. And I don't think you want to sit on the lead. I think you want to put it to them. I think you want to get everybody involved, keep them involved. You're running three lines. Uh, you've only got two substitutes anyway, really sitting on the bench. So you're going to use everybody, and everybody's going to uh, participate and you want to keep that score piling on and, and you notice that he's going to keep Bilger in there you want to keep building that confidence and I think that's been a, a big question in Coach Evans' hey, mind is is Bilger ready is he going to be consistent enough and this is a great confidence builder tonight he's having a heck of a night Major Indoor the Cross League celebrating tonight its largest crowd in its league history 16,269 as John Fay is beaten by Bilger tries to kind of kick it inside but Bilger protects Philadelphia ball 16,269 
if you're part of the lacrosse community as you are, Tony, that's got to do your heart good. Oh, that's great to see. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's getting better every year here in Philadelphia. Of course, last week in Detroit, they started with 13,000. Oh, French almost had his fourth on the rebound out of Mark Hahn. And Jaeger makes that save with no stick in his hand, the second one. Just uh, real acrobatic and doing a great job. Boy, he he's had a lot of shots at him tonight. Very magical. Shot with his paws especially. Score! A walk down the slot. I don't think Bilger ever saw that one. That was just that just beat him. He was looking on the ground for the ball somewhere, and it was up high over his uh, over his shoulder, so he never really had a shot. That's the second of the night by Walt Cataldo, and here he comes right down Broadway. Here's and it looked like somebody jumped, switched, and perhaps created the screen. Yeah, and you see Bilger's head go down. He's looking for the ball low, and it's up over. He never saw it. Well, that happens. Mr. So Cataldo, Brown Cataldo University, great athlete. In that third period, by the way, Philadelphia four for 13 on shots, and only 10 shots, one out of 10 for the New England Blazers, and uh, Philadelphia controlling the loose balls, as Andy Wilson does here. It's 12-6. I think uh, John Yeager realized, I talked to him for a long time tonight before the game, and, and you know, he said, hey, look, if these kids, they don't have any box experience, it's going to take them a while. You know, this is going to be great because uh, no matter how much we get beat by or if it, it's close or a lot, no matter what the difference, we're going to get experience and these kids are going to get better. we got athletes and uh, we're going to improve. And, uh, you know, with that kind of frame of uh, reference, I think he's going to be fine. He sure has played well. I mean, 13 Wilson, shots and only give up four goals in that hit. Andy Wilson, a good individual effort and the one-hand shovel shot beats Jaeger at 13-6. You know, one of the neat things I think about this team, Larry, is that you got some people here on this team that I think are going to become favorites of the crowd. And this is one kid, the rookie, Andy Wilson. He's just got such great wow. stick skills. There he is. I mean, he takes two hard checks, and he comes in. He gets it off one-handed. Boom. Getting cream. See, it's just great. He wraps it around Jaeger's hip. you got big Lou Delgado. You can tell everybody loves him. Just Lou, Lou, Lou. And, uh, you know, our favorite, John Tucker, and you got Brad Cott. So you got four people who are instant heroes here. And you got the rest of the team who's all contributing. And you got Han who's scoring goals like uh, he's picking cherries. So the has got a lot to root for. Yeah, the balance is there. Gary Martin's all alone. There he goes. And Yeager again leans back and holds the pipe with his off hand. An unusual technique. A breakaway the other end for Trocky. And a great job running him down from behind by Tony Rez. Tony Resch. Resch just ran him down. And Gary Martin awaits the loose one. And here comes the wing. By the way, John Tucker comes off the bench. There it is for Johnny Tucker. Just a great play once again. And then they're pushing the ball. They're moving the ball. The pass, once again, a great substitution move here. They bring him off the, the close defensive end. Send him in the offensive end from the bench. He breaks underneath. Uh, they find Tuck. Tucker's usually the one throwing that pass. Now he's the recipient. He puts it away. And he's a happy young man. Great pass. And a great shot to the offside. That's great camera work to stay with John Tucker all the way. The second out of Johnny Tucker. And the lowest goalie total ever, uh, lowest goal scored ever in the league is seven. The Wings have held two opponents to seven goals and have been held to seven goals themselves once. They've held the Blazers to six. When you come on down to the Spectrum for the February 12th game on Sunday, if you'd like to be a part of the Wings fan club, stop by the fan club tables in back of sections A and M. They're planning a car trip down to Baltimore, a bus trip for the game against the Thunder. So if you'd like to be interested in that, see you, Steve and Pat and John and Lou. The fan club is growing, and they'd love to have you come on board. And it's 14-6 after the Tucker goal. I think uh, Tony Resch and uh, DeSico have done a great job in their lines of, of getting back and preventing a lot of breakaways. We've only really seen three or four breakaways by the, by the Blazers all night. And Jaeger's a great uh, starter of that because he's got great outlet passes. But yet, uh, the Wings have gotten back. Whoops. Whoops, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin throws one to his girlfriend in the stands. He says, there's a souvenir. Come on back. I'm, I'm so hot right now. Let him come back right again here at me. I'm waiting on you. And there's Smith on the near wing. 
as the line change is completed. The issue no longer a doubt on Francis. When the issue is no longer a doubt, can he do some different things, maybe juggle some lines or whatever, coach for some experience? I think this early in the season, I don't think he wants to do that. I think he wants to keep them the same, get them playing with each other, finding out who does what best, uh, where, where you can expect to pass, how you're going to catch from somebody, who shoots well in a certain situation. Goes with a great look. Oh, and Tucker had it, missed it. Tucker wants to come off. He's tired. Didn't expect it. And a quick transition back the other way. And it's uh, beginning to get a little sloppy yeah, here, my tired. good friend. You can see it. You can really see it in the Blazers. And, and of course, when you're down by this many, you're really tired. That makes you more tired. And I think uh, either too many men on the floor penalty against Philadelphia. I think they're going to get caught. Yeah, they've been really successful with those little maneuvers around the substitution bench tonight. And that time, they're caught by the referee, so they get a two-minute minor. And for one of the few times tonight, the Blazers will be man up. Wings bench minor penalty, two minutes for too many men on the floor. Yeah, we'll see who serves that. I think Mark DeSico is going to serve that one. Wings bench minor, two minutes, too many men on the floor. There's the young Mike Page, the new assistant coach there, and his red hair, a great All-American from the University of Pennsylvania. As we await the man a great Boston world player. To to uh, tried the box studio. game himself last year. Got well, hit a few change. times and said, Tony, See you later. Don't later. Don't <laughs> coaching. <laughs> It'll be the rookie, Gabrielson. I guess that's a rookie's job to serve the bench minors. And there goes Scotty out of Princeton, New Jersey. Yeah, one of Delaware Valley's local, real, real talented young men. who had a great career at the University of Vermont. All-American in his senior year and captain up there two years. All New England for two years. Uh, just a great player. Tucker catches it flush off the window. And a long outlet for Freed. He'll run it down. He's got a trailer in Russia. He wants him. Has him. Resch. Oh, nice save as Jaeger squeezes the knees and keeps it away. Great play by Tucker, waits until Ricky's clear, and then throws him a beautiful one-bounce pass over his head. Free catches up to it, and then sees Resch, and gives him a nice pass. Tony almost has his second goal tonight. And that would have shocked the kid, a defensive player. And Bilger loses in front, and Smith can't get it past him as Bilger, a little sloppy, gets it uh, loose where Glover's got it. Glover hits it off a foot in front, and the rebound winds up in the crowd. Philadelphia possession with time moving off the penalty. Tucker with another great pass. Again, it's Freed running hard up the far wing. Has Martin now trailing. Goes it himself. Wilson fights for the rebound, but Faye comes out with it. Ricky's got all the moves, and Ricky's going to just get a... Get a little bit better shot, placement of his shot, and he's going to be very, very difficult to stop in this game. Now we see Mark Hahn, the veteran, working in the box on the man down. Nice save off the board by Bilger. Faye has Glover, and Glover is stripped by Mark Hahn. Recovered over the shoulder to Glover. Has a man, goes low, long, and wide. Patrocki was wide open, and Glover chose not yeah. to go to him. Three on two, though. Martin lifted his head and felt it from the rear. We're going to have a push from behind. Possession, Philadelphia. Yeah, that's not going to be a minor. It's not going to be a penalty. It's just going to give the ball to the wings, and the wings are going to take a timeout. Philadelphia will indeed take a timeout. With 9-18 and counting in our game. See the pass. See the push from behind. Martin goes down. And uh, they say it's not big enough for a minor, so they just give him possession. All right, we'll scrape Gary Martin up off the pitch and come on back in a moment. There we go. You got a man down, Larry, and uh, the Wings have the ball, so they're going to get double teamed by the Blazers in this situation. I think Bills is going to come up to try to help out a little bit. And some of the more experienced uh, lacrosse back rule smiths regard, remind us that's an over and back violation at back court. Back court violation. Possession will belong to oh, New England. You cannot cross over into the offensive line and come back into. With 9 10 and counting, possession New England. So it's just like a basketball rule. Once you're into the front court, you cannot go into the back. And it, so you can't use the whole field to stall the ball in a man down situation. Have to do it on half court and you uh, ran across. Of course, that rule is only applicable in the man down. Right. Great job by Bill. Just so makes himself over. big, takes the angle away, and they shoot wide. And it's a two-on-one as Gabrielson picks it up nicely. 
Pat Hahn goes to McKinney instead of the near side pipe. Low and hard as McKinney, not known as a goal scorer, almost popped one there. Francis' shot goes near side. And it'll be picked up by Bruce Chanachuk. Nobody picks up on the far side, but Bilger bails him out as Bob Trockey was left all alone. Delegati with five assists on the night. Just a little too high and wide for Conley, and he'll take the man, then the ball. Nifty little move by the little guy. And Mark Hahn almost got it through the five hole. Broken free for Burns. And Delegati strips. The chant of Lou for free. And it's French in front. And for French, that is goal number four for Lou Delegati, assist number six. What a combination. Yeah, they've just been great together. And this is hard work. Delgatti, you see with the ball in our replay, he worked hard and played good defense. Gives it to Frenchy. Frenchy keeps his stick, takes that nice bounce shot and puts it away. And uh, there's just nobody there to, to even help out Jaeger. He's at the mercy of French. And Jaeger's got to look around and say, come on, guys. Nobody even decked French after the goal. At least sent him a message after the goal. French has four goals. Delegati has six assists. And Ron Frazier, a little bit upset with this one, takes a timeout. The assist number 77. At the 756 mark. So Philadelphia, a very successful home opener and season opener as they blow out the expansion New England Blazers. It's 15-6 with 7.56 remaining. Well, they've been practicing for a while, and, and they've been ready to play, you know, and they've been, you want to you get a different color jersey out there to go against, you know it counts now, uh, the game's on, it's important to you, and now you get a chance to play, and that, that's so important, and now they're just psyched and going with it. If we get a look at the, uh, at the field down below us, as we check out the upcoming schedule at Baltimore, at Detroit, the expansion turbos, and then back again to the Baltimore Thunder, we are going to have somewhat of a delay here because the hats given away are now being given as a tribute to Mr. French. And we've got flying caps down below us for Paul French, the Virginia All-American. He's got a big smile on his face. It's, it's, and I can remember last year so well because it took Paul French three games before he got his first goal. And I, I remember he was on... Uh, one of the radio shows here in Philadelphia, WIP, on a, and a uh, lacrosse uh, day and call-in thing. And I called in and kind of broke his chops about, well, <laughs> Big Brother Mike's not here anymore. Are you going to be able to handle that and then finally break the ice here? And uh, Boy, he's come out tonight to start the 1989 season and uh, shut Coach Seaman up, that's for sure. No question. And as they clean up the caps, we will clean up our act. In a moment, we'll come back with the rest of the contest. Major Indoor Lacrosse on Prism is brought to you by Coors Light, the official beer of Major Indoor Lacrosse. It's the right beer now. By U.S. Air. Why the USA on U.S. Air. By the Philadelphia Airport Hilton Hotel, headquarters of the Philadelphia Wings. By STX. When you think lacrosse, think STX. And by Gold Medal Sporting Goods. With 10 convenient locations, it's the official sporting goods store of the Wings. And welcome back. Bill Virgil still doing a great job on the faceoffs. Wins this one clean. Looking for Cods picked off. Philadelphia had a season high of 17 goals against Baltimore a year ago. They've got 15 on the board here. Good screen by Clark, but Bilger able to handle it down low. Rebound in front. And a crease violation called on New England. Violation. The ball goes over the wing. Crease ball. And that'll be on Burns. And Philadelphia in no hurry now in the person of Andy Wilson. 5'11", 170 pound Andy Wilson out of Loyola University. In his scouting report, you'd say has got a stick. Has got a good stick. Brad Cott's stutter steps goes left. Takes the hit. 
But the loose ball is handled by New England as the clock ticks down. And back Michael comes New England. After the wing. That's Kazi. It's the biggest lead of the night at 15-6. Clark at the top as the line change begins. So the Wiglet, Where is the Lacrosse Hall of Fame? Wiglet, Ron Frazier being a member of it. Johns Hopkins University. The Hall of Fame is located in their phys ed building. Uh, there's a movement on to take it out of there and build it. A uh, Hall of Fame completely on its own. Shot is wide. That's going to take a lot of money. Desco scores on the rebound. Four, New England. Gets his own rebound uh, off the boards and uh, puts it away. Turn their back. Get a little sloppy. Get a little content. Don't try to keep the intensity on defense that you should. Here we get it. Going to get a good look at it here. Takes the shot. Kind of going for your own rebound in basketball. Gets it off the boards and puts it away. Got to block that guy out. He shot near side and seemingly anticipated the reverse action spin, and he cut left while everybody else kind of turned right. Sometimes a shooter knows where to look when nobody else might, because you know what kind of English he put on the ball, I guess. So Dave Desco cut to the 15-7, and again, seven is the fewest goals ever allowed in the major indoor lacrosse league. Philadelphia's done it twice, looking for a third trick. John Tucker still working over Cataldo. Clark. And John Fay in front had a step on Gabrielson, couldn't control. But it's been such a workmanlike effort for Philadelphia. They'd like to see them close it with class and dignity as well. Carr scores, five hole. That's a real nice shot. He takes that off his defenseman's hip. I don't think those really had a, a great uh, chance for that. And Mr. Carr can put him away too, so it's a real nice shot. You see him get it off the boards here. And, Rough. He comes in. He goes right off the hip there, and uh, you called it, Larry, right between the knees again. Now, Bilger did not react. Reacted by looking behind him. Kelly Carr scoring for the wing, unassisted. So again, uh, the Blazers score back-to-back -back quick ones as they did in period number two. These 20 seconds apart, 30 seconds apart rather. They scored two goals of six seconds apart in period number two. And a face-off violation on Philadelphia in Glover of possession. Scotty Boyle almost gets tattooed as he cuts across. I can't believe Scotty Boyle, the referee, doesn't have a helmet on because last year his initial uh, refereeing job, he got about seven stitches in the top of his head breaking up a fight. So he jumps he's in there too, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. There's Gabrielson. He puts it away if the, fan, if the cameras could only find his father, the biggest fan in Philadelphia. <laughs> Right down below is the father of Scott Gabrielson wearing a blue and white check shirt and adorable red suspenders having a freak for his son over the shoulder goal, Scott Gabrielson. Yeah, real nice cut, handles the check and takes a look at all four corners and puts it away. Real nice technique, good job. That's fun to watch Dad doing the high fives right below us. As Gabrielson has scored, again, he's out of Princeton, New Jersey at 23 years of age. An all New England performer for Vermont. High school All American at Princeton High School, college All American at Vermont. Conley to French off the far pipe. And a crease violation on French. And the whistle sends it back the other way. It's 16 8 Philadelphia. Again, 16,000 plus here at the Spectrum for the major indoor lacrosse league opener. Glover's got a lot of room to move. And Bilger just stands his ground. And here we go the other way. French has a couple of steps. Goal number five for Paul French. Real good effort. They said a big boy can't run. He's right. still got it in him. Picks up that ground ball, goes down. Got it once again, all four corners. Makes Jaeger commit himself and then puts it away off his hip. You see it here from behind. Uh, you're just not going to stop that shot from that angle. It is 17 to 8. And welcome back, Paul French. Had nine goals all of last year. Paul French has five tonight. The time, 10 minutes, 10 seconds. At the 10-10 mark. Philadelphia cruising. 
Looking forward to seeing Detroit in a few weeks. Conley. Nice save. Yeager goes on down and stop Manley. And a nice short hop pass out from Yeager to Kazi on the cross. Detroit, of course, the other expansion team. New England has been uh, turned around here as they are right now. Yeager is not going to commit. Yeah, he's got to come out on that. And Mark Hahn will not hit him. And Hahn gets set from behind as he had loose possession. However, intercepted by the wing. The interception by Durgel. And he'll rag some clock. Bill Durgel, of course, known for the face-offs. Well, now takes to the bench. I don't know what the stats are on him tonight, but he certainly has dominated here in the second half. It's, just, uh, it's been all Billy Durgel, which I think has got to make Coach Frazier from New England kind of reevaluate his philosophy that a face-off man in this game isn't important. That's for the ball. Shot clock down at 20 as Andy Wilson rags it out. To Scott Carruthers. Saved by Jaeger. Resets the clock, however. Front of the board. And Tony Resch will try to use his goal. Oh, and he slides over a loose part of the carpet. Ball still loose. And again, no leg pads. Rug burn has to be a major concern for these guys. Oh, yeah, you get in the shower and you take the scrub brush and you got to scrub those sores out. Carruthers off the shoulder. I'm just imagining the scene of the scrub brush and the rug burn, and you're kind of covered in green. There's a bit of a boarding call there, and possession belongs to Philadelphia. Of course, not a serious enough boarding to warrant a penalty, just a possession, and that is a judgment call. Right, Doug. that's completely a judgment call on the referee's part. February 9th, and 2.45 and counting. Philadelphia's got one in the bank. Yeah, I think Coach Evans and uh, General Manager Mike French, Assistant Coach Mike Page, have to re really feel good about the opening game. And uh, you know, only two teams are going to go to the uh, playoffs. The playoffs going to be a one-game championship That's against right. the uh, top two teams in the league. And you've got to win these games right here to get there. Wings with it again. Carruthers. Carruthers is crunched. Raises his hand and looks for a penalty. And there is one forthcoming as builds your head for his bench. All the way across it comes to Brad Cox. Sandy Wilson. Oh, that hurt. Wilson got tattooed. But it's still Gary Martin alone in front. What a great look from Brad Cox. What a great look. Sees the man far side off crease. Thanks everybody. Finds the open man. Six on or five on four. Six on five, excuse me. There he finds him. Nice fakes. Gets uh, Jaeger down, committed, and puts it away. Brad Cox really making his mark both as a scorer and as a passer as Gary Martin gets his first. Gary Martin scored a hat trick on his first three shots as a wing. Had to wait 58 minutes to get a goal tonight. And the penalty will be Hill heading to the box. And of course we have a penalty against uh, as the New England as you're saying. So we're going to be man up again for the wings so they can add to this lead. There's a very happy Dave Evans. Goodness, he was nervous all day long waiting for this one to start was Dave Evans. Yeah, he, he told us he couldn't get late to get started. You got to get out there and play. Get those uh, butterflies out of your belly. It's, it's even harder for a coach because you're not going to go out and do it. Uh, you, you're watching. You think you got them ready. You think you, you got the lines where you want them. You got the right people playing with each other. But you don't know until you play. It is 18-8. Philadelphia has not scored 18 goals since their first year in the league. They've got him tonight against the expansion Blazers of New England. And we've seen uh, Bill Durgel on his uh, on his leaning forward on his stick time after time and breaking it free time after time. Hey, as a coach, you got to appreciate that. The fans may not realize how critical that is in this game. Oh, it is. Billy Durgel comes out of the uh, last year's field, Division One lacrosse with 84% uh, winning percentage wow. on face-offs. Uh, when you get a team like Syracuse that goes 16-0 uh, and, and wins the national championship, getting that ball back after every goal is so very, very important. He gives you that commodity. He's just so good at it. Fundamentally so sound. Great pass by Andy Wilson. To Delegati. Delegati's been the assist maker looking to get one of his own. 
And the ball did indeed go off. Uh, there's Delegati. The ball went off the shoulder of Yeager as Delegati comes off. And a reminder, we'll be back on February the 12th, a Sunday afternooner. Philadelphia against the Baltimore Thunder. So we have a face-off, and once again, now Durgil's uh, talents here, technique, probably will pop the ball behind him to either Wilson or Tucker. There you Pops go. Pops it behind him to pass Wilson. Wilson will screen off Fay and allow Bilger. <laughs> and Paul French has five goals. Lou Delegati, six assists, the highlights tonight. And John Tucker, a brilliant floor performance. The stabilizing force, the unselfish one. There's the uh, defense one -on -one. that Ronnie Frazier was telling us about that he was going to use once in a while tonight, man down. That's the first time he's used it where he cuts everybody off and leaves the far side two people zone. And it worked, got the ball back for him, but now here comes the break by the wings. And there's Delegati. Can't tell kids who are starting to play this game, high school kids, college kids, how important it is the technique of shooting. Lou Delegati's going to give you a clinic right here. Sticks are up, sticks up in front of him. Both hands are out in front of his body, and he just puts it away. Just, you got to look at his position right here. See, everything's in front of him, and he just puts it where he wants to real quick, just with his wrist. It doesn't have to be that high velocity wind-up crank. His, his body's in front of him. Here's a great pass. But watch his hands. Everything's in front of his body. just puts it away. Hits that side right off the hip. I love that flick of the wrist, you know, you don't really, out, like a Tim Curran in hockey, it's placement, speed, and strength in those wrists. That's correct, Larry, no doubt about it. It's 19-8, and indeed the massacre is about to conclude here tonight. Major confidence builder for Philadelphia, they put 19 on the board under Mike Page's new offensive system. Kevin Bilger has been strong, uh-oh, Johnny Tucker goes head first into the 4x4, four four. there's Tuck. And he's a 60-minute player, no question. There's no doubt about that. Kind of whistle blows to the fat lady sings. John Tucker comes to play. There you see it. We'll count down the final 30 seconds. A mill record 16,000 plus. Watch this one. Shannon Chuck. Her builder. And one last look to John Tucker. Do it, Captain. The unselfish look back for Manley. Tucker the dunk with four, three, two, one. A raise of the hand and a congratulations all around. Congratulations, Wings, and a great, great job by the uh, Dave Evans coach team here, the Philadelphia Wings. And welcome to the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. For the New England Blazers, Philadelphia has put 19 goals on the board, held the Blazers to single digits. Five goals out of Paul French, one goal and six assists for Lou Delegati. A strong performance out of Kevin Bilger. That a key question mark coming in. Yeah, he certainly was brilliant tonight. Did a great job. New England's got to go home and go, well, we know what the game's all about. All right, Tony, we're going to complete this one. We'll wrap it up for you here at the Spectrum. For our producer, John Slobotkin, director, J.R. Aguilla, Technical Director Pete Fama, Associate Producer Paul Jolivitz, the rest of our brilliant crew here at the Spectrum. For Tony Seaman, I'm Larry Rosen. We'll see you on February 12th against the Baltimore Thunder. There's your final score. The wings are underway and flying high. Good night, everybody.